Hi, I'm John McConnell, President and CEO of Victoria Gold. Victoria is a TSX listed company. Currently, our market cap is about 1.1 billion Canadian. Um, we operate the Eagle Gold Mine in Canada's Yukon Territory. We're on track to meet guidance this year of uh, just over 180,000 ounces of gold per year. Um, mine is running well. We certainly had our challenges uh, uh, over the past two years, uh, not the least of which was COVID, but uh, also some mechanical problems uh, at the site. But we seem to have uh, worked through those and... Uh, you know, now we're looking at increasing production and we have an internal project we call 250K and that's to be at 250,000 ounces by 2023. John, we talk more. Well, we, we, we are going to talk more about it. So I appreciate you coming on again, John. We'll be back in uh, July. Um, Q3 results out. Uh, Nice steady growth. We, we, we've seen a sort of real sort of growth throughout the year. It sounds like you expect to finish the year off in Q4 um, with even better numbers if you're going to hit that 180 number this year. So maybe run through the, the, the highlights of the Q3 numbers and I want to kind of pick up on that. Yeah, I mean, Q3 was uh, exactly as planned uh, on budget uh, for us. Uh, you know, I know there were some doubters, but uh, We've always said, because we're a bit of a seasonal operation, that our production would be skewed towards the third and fourth quarter. I don't have the exact number in front of me, but uh, I know we produced over 50,000 ounces in Q3, which has us on track to uh, produce over 180,000 ounces for the year. Well, yeah, I mean, it's 55,827, uh, which puts you at just, just shy of 115,000 ounces for the year. So you're going to have to have quite a bumper Q4, but your expectation is that you will. Well, you know, in uh, Q or in August and September, we produced uh, 20,000 ounces. Um, so, you know, each of those months, and uh, so, you know, we produce uh, 20,000, just over 20,000 ounces in uh, October, November and December, and we uh, are above guidance. So, I mean, talk to me about how you get to, okay, you got the project to 250K for, 2020, uh, for 2023, which is great. Um, but... And you've been ramping up nicely. The trend, the trend is good. Trend is our friend at the moment. So, what, what um, do you, else do you need to do to ensure this you know, increasing number? I mean, you know, how do you get through those times? How do you produce those those answers? What are the big challenges for you? Yeah, two two things. Uh, number one is we're going to go from stacking nine months a year to stacking eleven months of the year. Um, you know, we now have. Uh, two winters behind us and we understand the challenges of working in cold weather. So we're very comfortable going to stack 11 months of the year. Coldest month, January, we'll still uh, not stack and we actually need that to do some maintenance in the plant uh, during that period. Um, so that adds, you know, roughly 30,000 ounces to our annual production. The other thing is, uh, there's a shear zone that runs through the center of the deposit. We now understand it uh, totally, having been mining there for two years. It, it you know, carries mineralization the same as the uh, granodiorite. Um, but one of the problems is when we blast it, it breaks very finely and actually causes us a few problems in the plant if there's wet material. Um, but we see this as an opportunity that we could screen off that fine material and direct transport it to the leach pad. And that would give us 20% more capacity through the crushing plant. And that equates to another uh, 30,000 ounces per year. So we've done the preliminary engineering and we're proposing that we would screen off the fines between the secondary crusher and the tertiary. It's the tertiaries that are our bottleneck. Um, so we've done the preliminary engineering. We're currently completing the detailed engineering 
We'll order the long lead equipment items this month, uh, start construction in uh, the latter part of May, June and July will be construction, commissioning in August, and then that has us running the plant through the third and fourth quarters of 2022. I mean, John, t- talk to me about the valuation of the company. You, you know, it's 1.1, 1.2, depending on the day of the week. Um, at the moment, you're, you know, you've announced 115,000 ounces for the year, 180,000 um, for, the, for the end of this year. And it's been a fairly, it's been a fairly strange market for uh, precious metals, gold companies specifically, in the sense that it's been a sort of downward trend. You seem to have bucked that somewhat. So there's a big expectation on you delivering your 250K project. Um, what, what are the pressures that you're, or what, what are the conversations that you're having with your institutional shareholders that has obviously made you know them support you through this kind of what tricky period? What are they interested in? Yeah, you know, I don't think uh, the market factors in 250K yet. Um, you know, none of the, you know, we, we need to get a study out and, uh, we'll probably uh, get something out in front of people uh, in the first quarter of next year so that people can fully understand it. Now it's really just John McConnell arm waving these ideas. I mean, as I said, we've done the engineering now and, you know, the management team is very confident that uh, we'll get to 250K, but uh, it's still a little bit of show me. Um, so I would say we're, were valued on producing two hundred thousand ounces per year. But, but what are they? Um, what are they so waiting for, John? What, what, what's the thing that they're waiting for? You, you know, you've got the Orion Mines and Cura Mine and Van X and Fidelities. You, you name it. There's a, there's a bunch of people in it. The right names, but and they, they've got big positions in, in you. You getting to two fifty. I, I kind of like so what is it that they're looking for? You guys to be taken out. Is that the minute that, that they the moment that they can. Uh, materialize um, their holdings? Is that what they're holding out for? Or are you going to be suddenly dishing out dividends, which is, you know, going to no, change their day? I would say, uh, you know, some of our shareholders are a little different. Orion is different. You know, they're private equity. Um, Coor is a mining company. But if you talk about the, uh, you know, the Van X, the Fidelities, the Force Sales, They all encourage me to just keep doing what you're doing. You know, let's demonstrate that we can get up to 250K. Let's show some uh, drill results below at depth at Eagle. Let's get some exploration results out from Raven and Lynx. And, you know, then we'll see some more value added to Victoria. And that's the time to sell. It's not the time to sell right now. Okay, so they're being they're signposting this really clearly for you. Get your two fifty and beyond, and that's the moment when we're going to check out. That that's not going to help you though. So what's the most efficient way for them to check out of and and, and sell their shares? Well, I think you know everybody expects that we'll be taken over, or you know we operate and build the next mid tier mining company. Both create value. Right. One is one is longer term, and you know most of the institutional shareholders I talked about all have long term visions, and uh, you know they're not in it to make uh, a quick buck uh, over the next three months. They're there for two or three years on their horizon. Right. But but again, we we kind of getting two or three years is great, you know. But th- there's a moment. What will you've done in two or three years? But they, they still need to cash out here. So I think being, a, being wealthy and valuable on paper is different from them actually cashing in for their shareholders, uh, you know, and, and and themselves. And so I'm just I'm just thinking, what's the expectation of you in two or three years? What do they, what do you need to look like for them to go? This is on plan. This is what we expected from John, and he's gone and done it. What's the company look like? Yeah, I think, again, uh, there's a number of options. One is we get taken out by uh, another mining company. You mentioned Coor, a large shareholder. Or two, we uh, show that uh, there's another mine in Raven, and uh, we're developing it. 
And then, you know, the third is uh, perhaps we acquire something else. You know, with our free cash flow, it puts us in a great position to uh, be out looking at other things. So obviously, Coor have then got some interesting thinking to do because they're sitting at around just, just under 18% at, at the moment. They they're busy on a, they've got they're busy elsewhere obviously and they're 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 busy throwing off cash and they've got they've got a balance sheet as, as well so but they don't want to be overpaying for something like this yeah you know by leaving it too late because they sort of understand what you've got so they're, they're you know two or three years may be too long for them likewise for you in two or three years time you're going to know a heck of a lot more than you know now and you've got some options on the table yourself and whether or not you know you want to you've got the energy or, or, or inclination or ambition to to do that is, is, is kind of what i'm trying to trying to understand because there's a there's a kind of a narrative around hey billion 1.2 billion company is there real leverage in this is there real uh opportunity for you know, retail investors coming here, or is this all about the institutions? Yeah, I guess, you know, uh, I go back to uh, probably 2010, no, maybe a little later than that, 2011, we were a $60 million market cap company. You know, so by developing assets, uh, you know, exploring and developing, you add value. But do you add? Would you add more value by spinning out some of your assets and, and you know, sp- you know, sharing? That, that's certainly an option we'd look at. But uh, you know, I would rather build a mining company than spread our management too thin trying to uh, run three companies. Okay, so you th- you think there's re- there is still a growth component to this story? That's what I'm trying to get at, right? I want to say is, yep. is that is there something in here for all, all investors? So you think, despite being the size you are, there's still a growth component to this. Well, and I talked about you know Project Two Fifty K. We also have Project Twenty Forty, and that's extending the mine life another ten years out to twenty forty, and that's Eagle at depth. You know, uh, current uh, mine plan goes down to about three hundred and fifty meters. Uh, we have drilled a couple holes to 650 meters, and they're still in, you know, mineralization. And this spring and summer, we drilled, I think it was another 10 holes down to 850 meters. And, you know, you'll recall that the original feasibility study was at 1250 gold. Well, certainly at $1,800 gold or even $1,700 gold, you know, the mine life gets extended at depth. And, uh, you know, it's not the opportune time to do that drilling. We probably would have delayed that a couple of years if it wasn't for Coor coming into our stock. But, uh, you know, with the possibility that uh, they propose taking over Victoria, we want our shareholders to understand what the long-term potential with Eagle alone is. And then, you know, we've already talked about the exploration at uh, Raven and Lynx. Yeah, okay. So the, there's a kind of there's kind of d- d- defense move there, but at the same time, it's helping you understand what the what the potential is too. Okay. Um, you're obviously a, a ways, well, you're producing a lot of cash. When do you think you start dishing out meaningful dividends to your patient shareholders? Um, or do you keep saying, well, actually, let's put it back in the ground. We can create more value that way. I mean, how, how do you play it? Yeah, I mean, you know, our focus right now is paying down debt. And okay. we've got a, you know, at $1,700 gold, you know, we are focused on debt repayment and we want to get that down below 100, 100 million US by mid year next year. Where, where's it at today? It's about 190. Okay. US. You know, and then there's two things we can do with our cash. Uh, one is pay a dividend, as you've mentioned. Two, we could buy back shares. Um, and, you know, we'll start having those discussions at the board level early next year. But uh, I'm a large shareholder of Victoria, and I know which direction I'll be pointing this. That's on, uh, you know, 
putting in place a dividend. Okay, okay, right. You, you, you're one point one percent shareholder is significant indeed. Um, so dividend is the most likely. Um, you, do you think you need to do anything extraordinary to kind of compete with some of the other companies which are dividend payers out there, or do you think this is there's a kind of set number which is is you know I guess the market would be comfortable with. Do you, have to, do you need to show off, I guess, is what, we're, what I'm asking. I don't think so. Um, you know, we're going to be prudent. Um, you know, we come from nothing. So we're going to be careful with our money. Uh, and, you know, the one thing, if we put something in place in terms of a dividend, uh, you know, my observation of markets is uh, they really don't like it if you reduce it in the future. So... Let's make something, put something in place that's sustainable long term. Right. And so when would it start? Is it monthly? Is it quarterly? And what do you think a reasonable kickoff uh, as it would be for, for a dividend? Yeah, you know, we haven't given that a lot of thought yet. Uh, you know, we'll take advice from our financial advisors. And, you know, I've got a very experienced board of directors Uh you know, our chairman, Sean Harvey, is also the chairman of Perseus, who paid just announced a dividend. So, you know, you can probably look at uh, what Perseus is doing, and that'll give you a bit of a roadmap for what uh, Victoria may do in the future. Okay. Uh, good company. We've had Perseus on, uh, like those guys. I'll, I'll have a look um, and see what they're up to. I mean, with, with regards to, obviously, you, you've got a pretty pretty fulsome board here. Uh, CFO, is his. what's his number one brief? Just pay down that debt. What, what else has he got to worry about? Oh, he's got lots to worry about. But number one is let's get the debt paid down. And, and you know, we're constantly talking to the banks that hold our debt and saying, hey, you know, maybe uh, you need to knock a point or two off the interest rate we're paying. So uh, those discussions are always ongoing. And, you know, when you've got a, a million or 190 million U.S. in debt, you knock a point off, it saves you a couple million dollars a year. They're also paying attention to you if you've got 190 million of debt, uh, I suspect. Um, but, you, but you won't have that problem soon when you, when you get cash blowing. It, it, so you'll be able to maybe refinance it out uh, with cheaper rates, is what you're uh, telling us there. Yeah, I mean, we're in discussions with them all the time. Okay. <clears throat> you know, we've been a good customer. We've, uh, you know, made all the term payments that are required under the debt agreement. But we've also voluntarily uh, made more than 20 million in payments this year, reducing the debt. Okay, just, just sort of just in terms of like Mark, you know, obviously the the, the board quite 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 strong board. But in terms of you keeping your options open and keeping your eyes open, you know, what potential um, there is. Have you appointed anyone to kind of maybe look at the market, you know, even for conversations with Kerr or others, um, just to get a sense of what those numbers look like? Because obviously without the data, you can't make decisions. Or is it a case of you just getting on with operations and you're focusing on that? And if something comes along, then you'll make those decisions. I mean, are you staying in front of it is what I'm asking. I, you know, I think so. Um, you know, I think things like drilling eagle at depth, uh, you know, we increase the budget of our regional exploration this year. And so, you know, we're trying to stay ahead of it, you know, projects like 250K and the guys are always looking at other little incremental things we can do to increase production. Okay, no, and I, I get the saying ahead operationally. I'd expect that of you. you you're, you're ramping up nicely. I'm, I was thinking more about the market stuff in terms of what, we can look at share price, we can look at market cap, but what someone's prepared to pay today, because you know it's, it's a meaningful project, it could it will make a, a difference to one of the big mid-tier uh, players, um, is are you keeping your hand in and staying in front of those sorts of conversations so you get a sense of what how they're valuing you, what that number looks like? Sure. I mean, we've got some good financial advisors. Uh, you know, we have the analysts cover Victoria, so we talk to them regularly. Right. We have a, we have in a committee of the board we call the finance and M and A committee. Right. You know, it used to meet once a year. Now it's meeting uh, on a monthly basis. Uh, you know, since the core advance, and uh, 
We're having lots of good discussions at the board level, but a board meeting coming up in two weeks and you know, all of that is on the agenda again. Okay, so that that see that interests me. That, that okay, so that's a that's a part of your monthly discussions is is around how the market is valuing you and what potential suitors there are. But there there are no conversa- no meaningful conversations. Obviously, okay, apart from Kerr, obviously significant significant holder and probably insider to, to to a lot of these conversations. So, but there's no other meaningful conversations going on. Uh, around acquisition, your acquisition, as opposed to you making acquisitions? Yeah, no. I mean, you know, if your question is, are you talking to uh, anybody about acquiring Victoria? You know, we have set up a data room and we have signed a number of CAs and okay. people are doing their homework. And um, But, you know, I can't comment any no, further no, than no, no. that. Okay, so, so people, people in terms are, of us acquiring something, we've signed some CAs, looking at things, doing our due diligence, uh, you know. But we still feel the best opportunity for growth of Victoria is in our own backyard. You know, uh, Raven is looking spectacular, uh, you know, and uh, Eagle at depth is looking good. You know, we've got a number of juniors exploring around us. Um, so, you know, it's it bodes well for the future of Victoria to grow a company based in the Yukon. Yeah, it, it, cheaper for sure. Uh, it's just it's just a so question that people are asking because they're obviously big, you know, big merger recently. Well, I, I'm not even sure it's close, but, um, you know, that's got people thinking about, you know, how these big companies time in the market, and you know the size of the the projects that they do acquire have to make a meaningful difference to them. You you qualify under that basis, so people are, you know it's fair enough that they ask these questions. Um, with okay, so so it looks looks like more more of the same. Keep the operation uh, moving smoothly. COVID has been an impact from you. You probably didn't. You probably weren't affected by the the, the the fires, but COVID continues to be a problem here. Um, in fact, more so where you are. Is everyone one hundred percent vaccinated? Is that is it mandatory for you as an organisation? We've just put in place that uh, the entire workforce has to be vaccinated by the end of November, actually mid November, because they have the two week period. Or and you know, in Canada, the government is mandated that you can't fly unless you're fully vaccinated. So, you know, a number of our employees from outside the Yukon uh, wouldn't be able to travel to the mine anymore anyway. So um, we're seeing good cooperation there, and I fully expect that the entire workforce will be uh, vaccinated in time. That's, that's really interesting, because, I mean, that has caused problems elsewhere in terms of this these mandates. That, you know, certainly we see a lot of stories coming out of the U.S. around that. One. Are, are most of your most of your employees are, are local, but for, I guess for the outsiders with the flight component, it, it's difficult. I mean, are you prepared to let someone go if they say I don't want to get vaccinated? Are you going to make that? You're going to make that call. It's a tough call. Yes. No. We've made that call, and uh, you know we have to you know, protect the majority of our workforce. Um, You know, I'm responsible for their health and safety. And, uh, you know, we also have to make sure we have a healthy workforce in terms of for our shareholders. So it was a tough decision and, you know, lots of toing and froing. But at the end of the day, we decided that we would mandate vaccinations. And is that happening a lot? Uh, so, well, certainly the Yukon, but may, maybe even for, you know, further down in like B6. I know you've, you've got to you live in Vancouver as well. So is that normal? Well, most governments have done it. Yeah. So the federal government uh, has mandated all, you know, government employees have to be vaccinated. In the Yukon, the Yukon government has made the same mandate. I don't think it's happened in British Columbia yet, but... I'm sure it will. Um, and then, you know, the federal government has mandated that you cannot get on a plane or a train unless you're fully vaccinated. No exemptions. So, well, there are some health and religious exemptions, but 
I understand it's pretty narrow. Interesting. Interesting. I think I think there'll be a lot more stories coming out around, around that. You know, all around the world, religious exemption. Interesting one. Um, okay. Well, look, John, look, I appreciate the update. Really nice to see the Q3 numbers. You know, hit like you said they would. Q4 more more of the same, and then I guess you've got some really nice. Uh, decisions to make in uh, early 2000, uh, 2022. So um, appreciate your time today. Stay in touch. Yeah, and watch for some pretty good exploration results from uh, Raven Lynx and Rex Basel. When? Tell, tell me more. When, when can we expect that? <laughs> well, you know, the problems we talked about earlier with labor yeah. is being experienced by the assay lab, even more so you know, than uh, us at the mine site. And uh, the labs are backed up. I mean, we've got core we submitted for assaying back in April, and we have still not received all the results. You're kidding. No. So it, it, it's really bad. And, you know, the, the assayers are there. It's the people that uh, crush and grind the samples and get them prepared for assaying are all laborers, you know, so uh, unskilled labor. And that's where the shortage is in this country. Unskilled labor is the problem, not skilled labor. That's unusual. Wow. Because government pays uh, young people to stay home. Oh, you too. You know, I'll give you an example, yeah. uh, you know, and maybe I gave this example back in July, but uh, we made offers to uh, four third year geology students to come up to the Yukon for the summer and all four accepted the employment officer offers and the week they were supposed to fly up to Whitehorse three of them got a hold of us and said oh we've decided to take the summer off you know I don't have a lot of costs I live at my parents basement the government's paying me X uh, so I'm going to party this summer maybe I'm, maybe I'm getting too old uh, but that that didn't work in my day. I think I'd, no, neither. <laughs> I'd have a father who had a different attitude to to work. Um, well, no, okay. Well, I I I hope some of those things start resolving stuff. I hope people realize that we kind of got to get get back to work as best we can, and you know, hard work hard work uh, and experience uh, pays the bills. So, like. John, as always, great talking to you. Uh, stay in touch. I will look after the drill results you know, when, when they come through um, and uh, you know, follow your story with Rangers. Thank you. Okay, thank you.